It's Jay Z Clark. Yes, just uh, wandered in, Bill, and have a Good. look at the oh, skin, no. the complexion of this man at the minute. Have you got a new routine or something? Because mm-hmm. By crikey, you're looking good. Well, um, it's fair to say I had an issue this morning with my my, my skincare uh, regime. And uh, don't look at me <laughs> like that, Bill, because normally I'm a Nivea man, right? I sort of, I, for, for 20 years, I've applied the Nivea moisturizer. It's got a bit of sunscreen in there That's just cool. to sort of, you know, keep... Keep, keep the skin okay, but then I had to, I, so my mum got me some L'Oreal. Okay. I went to the, and it's got, it even had the anti-aging stuff in there, the mm. special ingredient. And then I was walking around this morning in South Melbourne and I puffed up like a puff of fish. Oh no. Puff it got fish. sweaty under there <laughs> oh, no. and the moisture couldn't escape. I felt sweaty and it was a horrible experience. I got to have to go, but I'm sorry to my good friends at L'Oreal, oh. but I'm going to have to go back to Nivea. What do you run with Daisy? Uh, Tash bought me something and to be completely honest, I use it every now and then after golf just to make sure it. Goes mm-hmm. away, so she thinks I'm using it. I don't use it. Billy? Some solid gold soap. <laughs> <laughs> Just an old block of soap block of around. Soap. Can't the feed floor it. of your shower. Yeah, four of them you for two bucks. You genuine grot. Oh. You four of them for two Filthy bucks. Man. Look at it. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> what an advertisement for not uh, using soap. They're at oh lunch, by the way, over there in the third they taste are. indoors. And India, seven for 84. Seven Ooh. for 84. Lion has got three for 23. Uh, Kuchman's got three for 14. <laughs> and Todd Murphy's got one for 12. <laughs> it's Kuhneman. Oh, Kuch. Yep. Kuhneman or uh, so oh, well. How long is this game going to go for? Uh, uh, five sessions. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. What are the Aussies going to do? Very interesting. Anyway, we could talk about that all day, but you are in here to talk footy. Yes. We had Harris Andrews on just before, mm. the new Brisbane captain. Bit of news in and around his coach. Yeah, Chris Fagan, he has re-signed for two more years. So Fags was due out at the end of the year. He was out of contract, but the Lions... Made a big show of faith here because this is significant in terms of the Hawthorne investigation or the AFL probe into the treatment of Indigenous players at Hawthorne. Now, Chris Fagan was named uh, in that initial report. Of course, now he's being probed along with Alistair Clarkson and the former welfare man, Jason Burt. But the Lions clearly know enough to say that doesn't bother us whatsoever. Chris Fagan is our man. We have clip complete faith and he will lead us to 2025. So there are some little bits of information dripping out of that, in, that uh, investigation at the moment that uh, Chris Fagan is pretty confident in his uh, position. I think there's a bit more to play out with Clarko, but a big show of faith for Chris Fagan. And I think if the wheels started to wobble on the Lions early this year, because they are a premiership favourite, Bill, we, we would have started talking. Our Fags, is he the man? Ooh. Is he the master tactician? Surely not. But, uh, we? well... They've had a couple of really good years. Well, it's like, it's like any out-of-contract coach. When you've got a uh, Mercedes yeah. and you can't get to the finish line first, then maybe you need to go into the mechanics, Bill. That's how it works. But clearly, Brisbane have uh, stamped him as, as their, lo- as their long <laughs> analogy. analogy. I do like it, though. It's a like show it? of faith. You just make that up? Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. He, loves, he does <laughs> love his <laughs> M1, though, and then he's in town soon right. and you but will be where, uh, What are you hearing about that investigation? But the list is good. Is it going to come? Yeah, I know. We know that. It's dragging on. Yeah, because I thought they were trying to wrap it up. I know we've got to talk to everyone and things. The AFL said initially they'd hope to have it done by Christmas. Yes. We're now rolling into March and they still haven't spoken to Clarko. And I don't think there's an end date clearly in sight because they've got to get all the information from all the people and they want natural justice to play out. And as I understand it, the people named in that report are going to defend it within an inch of their lives. Yes. talking about Alistair Clarkson yes. and his role in it. So I think from a legal perspective, this is as complicated as it gets. Oh. Say the people who are close to the sort of... Uh, the legal complexities in it. So I, I think this is just not going to go away anytime soon. And if the people are found not guilty, well, then maybe there will be some recourse. But it certainly will be very interesting. And Clark, in the news at the moment, giving the young reporter a bit of a gobful. Yeah, I, I apologised did. about that, yeah. didn't he? But, um, After some mediation. And he's, uh, yeah, he's just got to get better. And he knows that. He knows that he's got to get better than that if he's going to be a coach. So does that mean Gil McLaughlin stays on longer as CEO of the AFL until this investigation finishes. Well, I, I think he's going to be in for another couple of months, longer than what we thought, Bill. Yeah. So initially it was the Adelaide gather round, round five, yes. that we all thought would be the farewell and a big salute to Gil. But uh, it looks like with not only the Hawthorne investigation, but also Tasmania, mm. which is uh, continuing to be a bit of a thorn on the side. I think the Tasmanian side will get up. I don't have a lot of doubt about that, but they do need a little $350 million from the federal government, which is taking some time. And they need to prove that that stadium will not only house football and, you know, other uh, sporting things, but be a, you know, a real money-making 
Concerts. Uh, yes, flexible sort of yeah. resource. And I think it has yes, to have a right. roof on it for that purpose, surely. Yeah. You would think so. If you're going to have a concert, so. you could have no confidence in it if it doesn't have a roof. Then mm. you're not going to get absolutely pissed on at some stage. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but when you were playing, did you like playing under the Hate roof? It. Oh, the roof, yes. Going down to Tassie, did that, went there once. We lost by 100 points. Horrible experience. <laughs> in and around Tassie, beautiful. Playing down there, no thank you. Uh, while we're talking about stadiums, it's, like and yes. it's beautiful, the market's down there. Yes. The new bar uh, Fishos is very good. <laughs> Shout out to Jimmy Faulkner. Uh, the standoff around seats at the Pies. Yes. This is interesting. The feathers are flying, it's fair to say, around the Collingwood yes. seat stash because part of this 30 year old um, deal, agreement. Yeah, and agreement. a good agreement because the Pies deserve the right. They fill it every week, they come in droves. No. That's yes. a biased view. Back in the day, <laughs> exactly. Daisy. Back in the day. But now Richmond's outgrown Collingwood in a sense in terms of its membership base. So Hall, uh, Richmond, uh, Hawthorne, Essendon, Melbourne, they've all united on this this issue to try and strip Collingwood of these mm. 15,000 essentially free seats that they get for away games, not home games, away games. And, um, you know, that will that will fit, therefore be sort of redistributed amongst the other clubs. They're looking at stripping back, say, at least three or 4,000, although Hawthorne would love uh, Collingwood to have to get back all 15,000. It will at least be 4,000. That money will be spread around the other clubs. But you know the other issue, Daisy? I don't. <laughs> you know Collingwood... Right. Yes, in your illustrious no. playing career at Collingwood, yeah. right? Did you ever get ready in the other change rooms? Never once. We own one change room, we walk up the same way and we have the black and white stripes for the home games and yep. the white and black stripes for away games. So, Maguire quote. So that is part of this deal, right? And it's fair to say that other clubs have got their noses right out of joint that even in a final if Hawthorne, for example, yep. was to finish higher than yes. Collingwood. Bad right? example. Yes. Or yes, <laughs> yeah. at, at the moment, yeah, yeah, the Collingwood would still get the, the home, home room yep. with the wider race. Mm. So as part of this issue, Righto. I think that uh, could also oh, come oh, up. And also, Dave, yes. since you're, you played at Collingwood and you don't now, should Collingwood have a different away jumper? No, they shouldn't. Why? Well, it doesn't really clash with anyone's except North Melbourne's. And North Melbourne, where they are, they can wear a different jumper when they play. Hey, there is plenty more still to talk, including Melbourne may be losing another young Ooh. star. We chat to you after this. About a young star who might head back home. Yes, Cosy Pickett Ooh, is the man no. who's firmly in uh, Port Adelaide's sights. There's no doubt about that. But Melbourne, whereas they were... Quite concerned about Luke Jackson heading back to um, Fremantle or Western Australia last year. They're not as worried about this one. So as things stand, Melbourne's still very confident. For all the hoo-ha and, and uh, jungle drums that are beating, Melbourne's still very confident that Cozzy Pickett will stay in red and blue. Now, he played in the midfield on Friday night against St Kilda. I'm not sure if you caught a look at that, blue uh, Bill, but he was outstanding. So was he? He was in the midfield. Something different to that midfield, Bill. Because oh. think of Petrarca, you got Oliver Hard Nuts, ping. slightly bit slow. Of ping. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Bit of ping. Yeah. A couple of Pinger. times, like Pinger. you, Daisy, they couldn't lay a glove on him Ooh, as he yeah. sort of danced through the middle of the ground. He took a big running, uh, three running bounces up on the wing and delivered forward beautifully. So, look, there's no doubt this will be one of the big contract watchers of the year. Cosy Pickett, Tom DeConing at Carlton is one of the other ones. Ooh. Ben Mackay at North Melbourne. Ooh. If he leaves as a free agent, North Melbourne could get, who, could, who knows, pick two potentially. So they're the big contract watchers, but Melbourne, whereas they were, they knew that something was off with Luke Jackson, who wanted to go back and see his family from very early last year. They are much more confident with Cozzy Pickett. Now, given that the, the pair were picks three and picks 10 or picks 12 in that uh, draft from a few years ago, it would be a disaster if they were both to walk out the door. They're a big plank in their future list plans. But at Melbourne, Melbourne fans, I think Rest easy. Rest easy. The right Cozzy Pickett at this stage will be uh, remaining, but uh, we'll see how it goes this year. What happened to Noah Bolter? Ooh. He so was the, coaching. The Richmond key defender. So Ivan yeah. Maric yes. was, I believe, the Croatian coach. It was a game between Croatia and Afghanistan down there in right. Altona yep. for the 2023 Nations Footy Cup. Yes, that you good. Followed. Yeah, yeah. This, and good on them for getting down there and closely help, helping yep. out. You betcha. But what happened, it got a bit uh, tense on the field and some things were being said, as I understand it, from the sidelines. And then some of the fans took their sort of uh, tensions onto the field. And next Ooh. minute... Um, <laughs> it, it has blown up into a, a full on brawl. So fans v fans on the field or fans v players? Bit of a, bit, a, big, a big jumble, a right. big jumble. Wow. 
And it's fair to say that Noah Bolter, who was just minding his own business, and I think at one point when it did look like the bloke next to him um, was about to punch him, he put up his hands and say, mate, I, I don't want any sort of fight here. Good. Or relax. Yeah. Yep. And I think he still caught one for his um, for the for the business anyway. Mm. So he was completely unprovoked. Noah Bolter did nothing wrong. He's back at training. He's going to play this weekend. So it's all good. But that's not exactly what no. you're after. No. Well, he's helping out. Not when you're helping out. He's helping no, out. Not at any time, there. regardless. Would have yes. been doing it for nothing. Yeah, yeah exactly. We don't um, condone that at all. But he's helping out. And then the blue starts, which is just not on. Not ideal. Uh, now, the Western Bulldogs, we mm. got. Got a uh, little uh, puzzle there. Yes. We're just trying to put our pieces, pu- of pieces the puzzle. <laughs> in, into the right <laughs> spot. The puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. to get the next bit. <laughs> couldn't get the, the next pieces. bit. <laughs> Arguably the easiest <laughs> part. The oh. forward line, please. So I've got these four puzzles. Yeah. Oh, pieces. <laughs> yeah, <there's> a... <laughs> so I've got Air Norton. Yes. Where's... Air Norton. Yeah. Full forward. Righto. I got uh, Sam Darcy. Down back. Down back. Not forward. No. So Ryan Should Gardner's have gone, gone with him down. last, Bill. Oh, yes. That's... Well, the puzzle just popped up. <laughs> Build it up. So Ryan Gardner, yes. Gardner the sort of um, blue collar fullback, yep. is out with a fractured elbow. He could be out for months, depending on how that goes over the next few weeks. So we've been talking about it, and even Luke Beveridge has been wondering, where am I going to play Sam Darcy? But now with Ryan Gardner going down injury, we're going to expect him to play in that back line next to Liam Jones, your old mate yep. uh, Daisy, and Alex Keith. The former Crow, and that key forward combination will be Aaron Norton, as you say, yep. Bill, Jamara Eugle Hagen, that's the other one, and Rory Lobb are the three. Lobby. So, Bulldogs play Melbourne in that Josh round one Bruce. game. He was trialing down back. He was trying to put himself up for a spot down there if there wasn't. I think he sort of read the writing on the wall with yes. the, the big men that got up forward. So, it'd be interesting yes. to see because if one of those doesn't fire down back and yes. old mate Gardner's out for a while, Tim O'Brien. Yeah, there's got some options, the dogs, and a little yeah, bit of depth they? now in that back line, mm. which they didn't have. True. And they're going to have to defend a lot better, aren't they, Daisy? Because they've been poor in that area, fair to say, over the past 12 to 18 months. So uh, Lukey Beveridge is playing a much tighter system. But I think Sam Darcy, the number two pick, he, geez, he looks good. Mm. I think he'll uh, be expected to start down back. And that was one of the biggest questions for the Bulldogs leading into that first game game first round game against Melbourne. We look forward to that. We are off to Moorabbin tomorrow night to watch mm. the Saints take on the Bombers. What can we expect yeah. from the Saints? We all want Rossi to go well. We but do. Geez, they've been struck by injuries yes. and you can't win a flag in February or January. But you can certainly lose one. They looked ordinary, to be honest, in that in that Friday night loss to Melbourne. And we're all cheering our great mate, uh, Rossi. But what I think it exposed was the state of that list. It is in a real pickle. I mean, at full forward, they rotated Zane Cordy. Yep. And Dougal Howard. Now, they, they are two fullbacks. Mm, yeah. Let, let's be honest. Our man. And they could, you know, Jack Steele and Jade Gresham, they were winning enough of the hard rut, but it's fair to say that their skill execution was nowhere near Melbourne. So that delivery forward to a, a um, understrength forward line was a real pickle. And I think this year for St Kilda, it is going to be a real challenge to get some wins on the board and manufacture a score until Max King and potentially Tim Membry uh, get back. Membry in a race for round one. King should be too far behind, but Rossi Lyon, he, he does have a big challenge, and I just wonder whether this could be the year that, that the club moves on from potentially the Seb Rosses, the Jack Billings, the the Websters, um, the McKenzies. They've got a lot of mid-tier types who mm-hmm. they've topped up with, and they're paying um, – but whether there's going to be a big cleanse on that list for the end of the season, that wouldn't surprise me at all, Daisy. Mm. Are they happy enough that if that does happen, uh, surely they're not going to be putting Ross under any sort of pressure? Because no. it was first, no. that's where they looked the first time to the yeah. coaches. Yeah. Now they need to probably understand that maybe that wasn't the issue and the list management and the list is the real issue. And I think they were spot on, Daisy. I think they were pretty honest about that. Ross and the, the bosses at St Kilda when he came in. And that is why this is going to be a four, five year thing. For Ross Lyon. So I don't think there's going to be any knee-jerk reactions because when you've got Dougal Howard and Zane Cordy at full forward, uh, Daisy, you're stuffed. You're going to be a bit yeah, tricky. Absolutely. Uh, Jay-Z, as comprehensive as Ooh. always. Anything else before yes. we go? Anything we've missed? Any because little... A tidbit? Taron Thomas Gold. at North Melbourne. Ooh, okay. He is a big watch at North Melbourne. He is going to have to train his backside off. Does he play around one? I'd be shocked. Get I'd the respect of the players and coaching staff back. I think and the footy world probably a little bit and too. The footy world, I think he's got a mission just to be getting back into the VFL team in right. terms of his right. fitness and his application and attitude. So win back respect, that's a good way to put it. I think there's going to be a big watch on Taron Thomas and how he goes over the next month because it's not going to be easy 
Mm. And this Saturday, oh. the return, oh, yes. DSL, yes. yourself, Cathers, Joey, Lamo. I know you've been hanging out for it. It's all you do on Saturday morning is it listen is. to us. So looking forward to it. Lee, more Lemo this year. So will be some laughs. Can't wait to have a bit of fun. Joey's analysis is always the best in the business. And Kath Lachlan just adds a class probably that we need. Did days. you hear we had him on the other day and Bill asked him what his nickname was? <laughs> oh, you didn't. No, is that Joey? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what his name is? What's his real name? Anthony. No, I didn't know that. Dead Set <laughs> Legends, 10 a.m. on Triple M Melbourne. Thank you, Jay-Z. Thank you, Jay. It's the Rush Hour. Triple Thank M. Jay.